Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we're going to discuss about the CISA question part three twenty four. Thanks for sharing a great response in my part one and part two video that motivate me to make the part three video. In this video, we're going to discuss some questions on BCP and uh, chain management functions. So if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. And um, if you want to know more about me, you can check my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first coffee shot. In the process of implementing major system upgrades across organization operational infrastructure it is critical to manage and mitigate potential risks that could affect the system stability and business operation considering the objective of effectively handling the risk tied to the deployment of new production system which of the following strategy is most essential so question talking about they want to deploy something and uh, when they deploy you know if something is happened risk and all that how to mitigate how to prevent that so option say con configuration management see configuration management is an outcome of a uniformity of configuration across the organization but the question is not talking about um, uh, the question is not talking about preventing the configuration issues and all that question say they want to prevent the risk from the new aspect option b incident management ultimate goal of incident management is to reduce the impact which can be anything okay problem management basically used to track the root cause and uh, the change management is basically ensure the integrity reliability of system it, it means even if i'm introducing any kind of a patches in the system it need to go through a change management process because in change management we include the test of the change deploy of the change so you can say change management is basically introduced in a problem also it is used in incident management also it is used in a configuration management also because let's take example if you want to deploy any patch definitely according to patch management we deploy the patch but to test of the patch approval of the patch to deploy because it modify the system configuration it need to go through a chain management process so if you don't have a chain management process where we don't do risk impact analysis we cannot go for patch management so that's why the answer is basically chain management as an answer now to answer that question you know there is a coffee snacks i have example if you can see patch management any question talking on maintaining the current knowledge of available patches or ensure the uniformity of patch across the organization so answer is patch management if the question talking about reducing the impact or reducing the occurrence of the event and all that then answer is incident management to ensure the integrity and reliability of a system by implementing effective chain management processor that is basically called as a chain management because when you're talking about chain management procedure it ensure the only authorized change are introduced and it also used to track those changes so it prevent unauthorized change and configuration management is representing as a controlling the security baseline when changes do occur okay so definitely without chain management configuration management outcome cannot be done okay so that's the reason we basically went with the answer chain management okay let's move to the next question thank you during the audit of organization chain management process is auditors seek to determine whether process is functioning effectively in managing and implement changes within the it environment so this is the scope which of the following would be best enable the auditor to verify that change management process is working effectively so here we're talking about how to verify change management is working effectively so option a review the frequency of emergency change to evaluate the adequacy of initial change assessment and planning process it is true but only checking an emergency will not give me the visibility whether the change management is working effectively option C b is examine the change records and documentation for evidence of appropriate approval implementation and post implementation review for a sample of recent change that is also important because by that you can able to see all kind of a change c say conducting an interview with the it staff and management to gather subjective assessment of change management process effectiveness but just by asking question and they giving a response will not give me visibility about the effectiveness and d say analyzing the trend of reported incident before and after change to assess the impact of change management process on system stability but that cover only one aspect see if you want to verify the process effectiveness we can do that with the help of documentation because writing it doesn't mean happen go look and verify so if you have a documentation in place by that we can able to get a better visibility 
that is why the answer is basically b for beta because that is the best way to verify the chain man process working or not we can compare before chain after change we can compare with the record has been followed thoroughly or not that visibility we get and this is also kind of a compliance test let's move to the next question thank you an auditor is evaluating the organization business continuity program which of the following step is most critical for developing an effective bcp and selecting an appropriate risk countermeasure see option a conducting risk assessment to identify potential threat and vulnerability see risk assessment identify threat they can also identify the impact but what is the level of impact how to prioritize that visibility will not be there before i answer this question let me explain you how bcp work see when you're talking about bcp the first step in the policy bcp is the first is policy the second thing we basically create a committee the third step is basically called as a bia because in the case of crisis it is not possible for me to protect everything so bia help you to prioritize what is important what is not let's take example we have a business one we have a business two and we have a business three okay the business owner definitely want their business to be protect first so first we identify threat we identify vulnerability associate with the business and then we identify the impact then we identify impact then we identify impact then we identify which impact need to be prioritized first so bia help you to prioritize that and based on that you prepare the recovery strategy okay so risk assessment only identify threat and vulnerability it will not give you the level of impact and bia is the most important part second option is conducting bia definitely bia help you to prioritize what is important what is not option c developing a disaster recovery plan to address the it infrastructure recovery C C is definitely there but it required based on some data and D say performing a vendor selection process to identify suitable business content service provider that is basically ex exposure external part and if you talk about C C DRP and vendor selection process will be a specific recovery strategy done after the BI has been identified the critical resources so C and D that is why we removed and question say auditor is evaluating the organization business continuity program so what is the most critical for developing a effective bcp is answer is bia because bia is the brain of bcp so one of the important outcome bia is to apart from rt and rpo is a way to group the information system according to recovery time always remember because bia help you to prioritize what is important what is not is it clear so let's move to the next question thank you an auditor is reviewing the organization disaster recovery plan the plan outline both rpo and rto which of the following statement most accurately describe the relationship between these two objective see i have seen lot of people get confused with this rp and rto so let me explain you see when we talking about rpo rpo is always deal with the data backup and rto is basically talk about the time it take to restore the services let's take example so we have a rpo of 2 hour now what is the meaning so we have a server here 7 am it basically start then it basically work till 9 am so at 9 am we took the first backup which is called 1.1 the next backup was basically scheduled at 11 and that's called 1.2 but what happened at 11:15 the server was basically down okay and here we have a rto which is basically 3 hour so according to 3 hour mean in 3 hour we have to restore so what we did by 1 pm i was able to restore the server but the last data i can restore is 1.2 which is called 11 o'clock so in this case the maximum data we have lost is 15 minutes and what is the maximum we have agreed is rpo is 2 hour is it clear that's why in every 2 hour we taking backup right so if you want to reduce the rpo you need to invest more on the backup cost because we need to increase the backup frequency so question talking about rpo define the maximum acceptable downtime before uh, let me erase that rpo define the maximum acceptable downtime before critical business function must be restored while rto specify the maximum allowed data loss which is not true so a is removed b say rp and rto are independent achieving one does not necessary impact or definitely impact because achieving a shorter rto might require more frequent backups example like if i if i'm defining a rpo 2 hours in every 2 hour we taking a backup so we are generating also 2 hour of data so taking a restoration of that 2 hour is also take time so that is why b is eliminate c say rpo determine the maximum amount of data loss acceptable in a disruption and rto define the time frame within which the critical business function must be restored 
and D say both RP and RTO solely focus on recovery time, which is not true. So that is the answer is C for Charlie. Okay, C for Charlie. Let me explain you why. See, one thing you need to understand is RPO determined based on an acceptable data loss in case of disruption. And RPO usually affect the data protection solution. So any question in the exam, backup and recovery, synchronous or asynchronous data replication, data replication kind of keyword is there. Answer is basically RPO. On the other side, RTO determined based on acceptable downtime in case of disruption. And RTO is the one which affect the technology which is used to make the application IT system available. It means what to use for the recovery, whether it is a warm site, hot site and cold site. So that's the most important part we have. So I want to show you this diagram, which is basically from the Venzi, uh, Venzu blog, and I will share the URL of the blog. Now, if you can see this process, okay. So we have an operation starting from here, okay. So in every two hour, we're taking backup. Suppose 7 a.m. we took the first backup, 9 a.m. we took the next backup, and then 11 a.m. we have to take the next backup. But after that, disaster strike. Now from here till this point, there's no activity happen. Let's take an example. Okay. So on the alternate side, we restore some services with that acceptable. We restore our operation. We run their function and all that. So I'm not saying we have a full fledged restoration, but we have a 30% restore. example, like in the case of power failure, I switch to UPS, but UPS will not give me that level of services. So with that 60% function, I am able to sur survive. Okay, so that is called as a SD. It means what is a point it required at which I can continue my function. I am not saying full fledged, but I continue. So that point is called as a SD or service delivery objective. And I put more effort in the later stage and I will restore the full window. So from the downtime, from the thing when it occur till my full restoration, that window is basically called as a AIW, acceptable interruption window. And that so here we restore acceptable services that is my RTO but from the RTO to this alternate mode on which I basically sustain with the acceptable level of services that that window is called as MTO maximum tolerable outage it means with that I can run see I, what I need I want 60% resource should be available to run so that is called SDO okay but for how long I can sustain that is called as a MTO you can see and after that I was able to restore so if you go back to the question okay because in, in, in uh, what you called uh, Caesar, we have the statements which can be asked on this function. So that's the reason I, I thought I will I will share this particular pointer. Okay, so let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. So when IS Auditor is evaluating the adequacy of organization disaster recovery strategy, understanding the basics upon which recovery strategies select is paramount. I understand. Okay. Given that the selection of recovery strategies is influenced by multiple criteria, which of the following would be considered the most critical factor to determine the appropriate recovery strategy for the organization operations? So question talking about the evaluating the adequacy of the organization disaster recovery strategy. They need to work on the selection of recovery strategy, which is actually influenced by multiple criteria. But which of the following is most important parameter to determine for recovery strategy? So option A, cost associated with implementing maintaining recovery solution. That is true. But that is an outcome. Option B, criticality of the business process and application that support this process, which is also true. C, geographical location of alternative recovery site and their susceptibility to similar disaster. But that is something we finalize after understanding a business. So C, removed. And option D, say compatibility of a recovery solution with existing IT infrastructure and software application. Again, it is a after understanding a business. Because question says, I sort of evaluating adequacy of disaster recovery strategy. And they also said selection of recovery strategies influenced by multiple criteria. It means C and D will become after the selection of business, which business is critical. But question itself say, what is the criteria? And which of the following would be considered the most critical factor in determining the appropriate recovery strategy for the organization operation? So the most important part is basically what is the criticality business process we have and the application that support this particular process. Because based on that only we can prepare the BIA, then based on a BI, we finalize the recovery strategy, which drive to CD, but with the, without understanding a business process, how can you do that functions? So that is the reason answer is basically B for beta. Let's move to the next question. Thank you. Which of the following term describes the maximum period of time the organization can afford to wait? Okay from the point of failure until restoration of critical service application. Very good question. So let me bring that diagram again. 
so if you can see this diagram okay so here you can see system is working fine here the disruption occur after one point of time we have enough resources to run the operation with acceptable level so that is basically my sdo okay with that for how long i can sustain that is basically my you can see mto maximum tolerable outage i can with that i can run but for how long and then but from the point of disruption till this is called as a interruption window so light is gone i am switching to ups but problem is that with the ups i am using a one monitor but i am not able to provide that session i am able to run the session after ups but i cannot sustain for long because ups has a particular power backup so i have to make sure power should come after one point of time if not then again back to zero but power come and i am able to start my monitor i am able to run the window but from the power failure till i don't get the same power that window is basically called as a interruption window okay so here you can see the question is which of the following term describe the maximum period of time the organization can afford to wait from the point of failure until the restoration of critical service application see option a sla see sla is basically a contract between the service provider and customer that define the level of service expected during an agreement tenure while sla can specify the downtime tolerance but they do not specifically define the maximum tolerable period between the failure and restoration so a removed option b is recovery time window rto is critical matrix uh, you know uh, it's basically critical matrix that specify the target duration of time and service within which business process can be restored but rto is more about objective for recovery not the maximum tolerable downtime interruption window makes sense d c ola operation level agreement again it is an agreement between the it service provider and another part of the organization so ola support the sla but do not specifically address the maximum tolerable window so here the answer is basically interruption window because interruption window is basically the maximum time we have we can able to sustain beyond which risk can be risk cannot be recover let's move to the next question <clears throat> so question is which of the following best define the objective that specify the level of service the organization aim to achieve using alt and processing mode until normal operation can be resumed we already discussed mtd is a maximum tolerable downtime so a removed rpo deal with the data backup b removed c say sdo which is talk about acceptable level of services and d say the time it take to restore the services so close answer is basically sdo because it's a level of service organization aim to achieve using a alt and processing mode until normal operation can be resumed so if you can go back to the venzo notes here you can see sdo 60% i am able to run i can restore the services but that 60% i am restore so with that i can run but i have to make sure i have to restore the full operation otherwise at one point of time I, i i i might face a loss so i the light was not there i use a ups but ups giving me a support of one hour so this is the again one hour backup i got i have to make sure before that power should be come if not then it's a loss if power come i'm back to same so is it clear so sdo is basically the matrix we have so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this particular session and it helped me to improve my particular videos if you share your feedbacks and i can see that you have not subscribed to my channel do subscribe to the channel you get some benefits and make sure you will not miss the future videos on a similar topic because i am putting more videos in this year on cisa okay and do let me know in the comment box what is the next video shall i make on the cisa okay thank you so much good day bye